Okay, here we go. Parabolas, guys. Uh, this is going to be quite the pre-lesson, so I hope you're uh, ready for that. It's going to take a little longer than normal. There's just so much going on. Uh, graphing, here we go. So we got these uh, equations that you're going to see on the top of page 95, and I just want to eliminate a little bit of confusion. The equations on the top of page uh, 95 are right here. Okay, now I put a light little X through them. They're not wrong, it's just not how I'm gonna approach it. They're exactly the same, I just don't want you to be confused right off the bat. Notice they have one over four C here, they have one over four C here. I have an A, and I have an A. Guess what? Over to the side, right, A equals one over four C. We're gonna, I'm gonna give you that formula. So you might be thinking, well, I'm just gonna use one over four C. That's fine, but that's not how I'm gonna approach it, so I just want you to get used to me. Um, but just understand that, okay? Also the formulas, um, again, where it says the focus is H comma K plus C, um, I'm not gonna talk much about that, okay? So these formulas are fine, they work, but we're gonna, we're gonna approach this completely different, and uh, you better hold on to your hats because uh, this may be the strangest math lesson you've ever seen. So here we go. Not, not right away. It's coming. All right. So basically what I want you to notice is there's really two kinds. Um, but each kind has two possible ways they could go. So really, this could be two ways. This could be two ways. So there's really a total of four parabolas. Parabola could be up like this. It could be down like this. It could be like this. Or it could be like that. So that's a total of four parabolas, just to get your just to get your mind in the right place. So what I'm going to show you is the basic of basic parabolas, where it comes from, why they're even parabolas. One thing I want to show you guys is this. I didn't think about this earlier, but y equals two x plus six. You guys have done ten thousand of these. You plot, you know, this is in y equals mx plus b. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the slope is 2 over 1, so 1, 2, right, 1, right. So I want you to know that you've been doing a million of these, okay? These are called linear equations. What's a root word for linear? Well, it's spelled L-I-N-E-A-R, line, okay? Linear. A linear function is a line. Get used to that terminology, okay? Now, but I want you to kind of take a magnifying glass and look. The highest power is a 1 there. The highest power is a 1 there. That's why they're linear. That's why they end up being lines, okay? It just is. Now, what we're doing today is called parabolas. A fancy name for a parabola is a quadratic. A quadratic, you've done them. Remember the quadratic formula? You take trinomials. What's a trinomial? x squared plus 6x minus 2. What's the highest power? 2. Keep that in mind. If it's a quadratic, it's a parabola. If it's a linear function, it's a line. So we're starting to throw a lot at you, so you got to start picking up on how do I tell the difference. Anyways, all things being said, I want you to notice that y on this kind is not squared. There's a 1 there. x is squared. So I'm going to boil it down to this unbelievably simplified formula, y equals x squared. And I've got this little table of values for x already ready for you. All you got to do is plug them in and square them. So what's negative 3 squared? 9. What's negative 2 squared? 4. What's negative 1 squared? 1. What's 0 squared? 0. What's 1 squared? 1. What's 2 squared? 4. What's 3 squared? 9. These are a whole bunch of points. Negative 3, 9. 1, 2, 3, 9. I hope that's 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep. Negative 2, 4. Be right here. Negative one one. Be right there. Zero zero there. One one there. Two four there. Three nine there. And there's an infinite number of points, but I want you to notice it makes a parabola. It just does. Now let's go over to this one. Notice my x is not squared. My y is squared. I don't care about anything else. We'll, we'll get to that. I just want to start with the basics. So my x is not squared. My y is. So this time I give myself a whole bunch of y's to square. And now we're going to try to find x. So negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0, 1, 4, 9. 
However, we got to plot these points. 9, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3. 4, negative 2. 1, negative 1. 0, 0. Now you can see where this is going. 1, 1. 4, 2. And then 9, 3, which would be like... And as you can see, you've got a parabola opening up to the right. Now I'm going to throw this in right now. This is a 1. That is my A. A equals 1. I want you to know something. If it's a Y equals A squared kind and A is positive, it's going to be what I call a happy face. Positive people are happy. That's my memory tool, okay? But if I said, hey, A is negative, in other words, watch this now. If I said, let's throw a negative in there, that would make every single one of these negative, and it would essentially split, and it would turn into this. See, that right there is y equals negative 1 x squared. There's my a. So if a is negative, it's going to be what I call a sad face. A uh, very easy memory tool. Positive people, if a is positive, happy, smile. If a is negative, sad. Okay? Now, let's go over to here. Notice, notice, we got an x equals y squared. It opens up to the right. Notice there's an invisible 1 there. That means A is 1. That also means that A is positive. Now, I try to come up with as many memory tools as I can. Growing up, I used to play this game fanatically called Pac-Man. So I'm going to turn this into a Pac-Man, and then eat, he's eating a whole bunch of dots. But which way is he going? He's heading towards the positive X direction. And that's how we're going to memorize this. Now, what if I put a negative right there? What if I did that? Well, that would make all of my x's negative. And, um, and essentially, that would flip it. And then if we turned it into a Pac-Man for a memory tool, that Pac-Man would be eating all the dots in the negative x direction. So, quick review. Y equals X squared, up like this if A is positive, down like that if A is negative. What about X equals Y squared? It's going to be a Pac-Man going to your right. If A is positive, Pac-Man's going to be eating all the dots to the left if it's negative. Call it quirky, don't care, but students memorize these things, okay? I'm going to hit pause a second. I'll be right back with you. All right, so now we need to have a good understanding. You guys don't know why, but you will. You need to be reminded, and I know you need this. I know you've been pounded with how to graph lines for years, but things have a way of just escaping. So I got to refresh your mind on this. We're going to talk about the equation of horizontal lines and what are the equations of vertical lines. You're going to need to know that for this lesson on parabolas. I thought, you know, you might be thinking, well, I thought this was about parabolas. It is. You'll see the significance in just a few. So, horizontal lines. Talking about the red one, talking about the red one. There's a couple ways of looking at this. I'm going to grab some random points here and just make them up kind of sort of. This would be 3, negative 2. This would be negative 1, negative 2. This one might be negative 2, negative 2. I want you to notice my y values are consistent. So that means the equation of this line here is y equals negative 2. Now, a faster way to do this is ask yourself, what axis does this cross? Well, it crosses the y-axis. Where does it cross the y-axis? Right at negative 2. So that's the name of that horizontal line. So with that being said, let's use that shortcut method and give this one a name. What axis does it cross? Well, it crosses the y-axis. Where does it cross it? At 2. So that is y equals 2. Now we're going to talk about these vertical lines. Well, let's use our theory. What axis does this vertical line cross? It crosses the x-axis, so that's x equals. Well, where does it cross the x-axis? 3, so that's its name. So 
about that one? Well, crosses the x-axis right at negative one. There's its name. All right, I'm gonna hit pause one more time. Okay, this is one of my favorite lessons to teach in class. It's not gonna be quite as dramatic without a whole classroom full of people doing it, but I'm gonna just give you this little theatrical moment, okay? Because I'm gonna have all my students stand up and actually perform this. But everybody's gonna go like this in class. They're gonna, and they're gonna say, I am a tulip bulb. And I am waiting for the sun to warm me up. There it is. I feel it. I am a tulip bulb blossoming in the springtime. Notice what I'm doing. I am a springtime tulip. I blossomed away from the soil. I also am growing things called pistils, P-I-S-T-I-L-S, where the bees are going to come pollinate soon. I am a springtime tulip. Cuckoo cachoo. That's a little thing from the Beatles, but I uh, don't know if you'll... It doesn't really make sense, but I like to say it. So there. Okay. What am I talking about? Am I absolutely losing it? Maybe. Take a look. Here's your directrix. That's the fancy name. Okay? Directrix. It's a line. What kind of line is it? It's a horizontal line. What does that mean? It means it's going to be y equals some number. How do we know what that number is? Well, wherever it crosses the y-axis. So what do I call this? The soil. Notice the tulip. Where is it blossoming? Mm -hmm. Away from the soil. Remember that. But there's another part. This is the vertex. Obviously, that's where the parabola changes direction. That's pretty easy to remember. I don't have any fancy thing to talk to you about that. That's where the stem touches the tulip. How about that? And then the focus is what I want you guys to remember is the pistil, P-I-S-T-I-L. And we're just making up a little nickname so you guys can remember that it blossoms around the pistil, always. And I want you to notice something. This distance is called the letter C. This distance is called the letter C. Well, do you remember the formula A equals 1 over 4C? If we know what this distance is, we can plug it into this formula, and then it will give us our A. Remember, A was a very significant part of the equation of a parabola. So, with all that being said, we should be able to use this information and really answer anything that this has for us to, to talk about. There's one more thing I gotta show you and we're done. All right, I've only got like uh, two minutes, so I gotta speed this up. It's a long pre-lesson. I knew it was gonna be, but here we go. So what the heck is this? Well, look, we're gonna subtract two, subtract two, so we get X is eight. Add two, add two, so we get X is 12. I want you to notice something, this is significant. This was x minus 2. This was x plus 2. Look at the answer for x with x plus 2 compared to the answer for x when x was x minus 2. x minus 2 made x bigger. x plus 2 made x smaller. Keep that in mind. Quick review. What does y equals x squared look like? Well, because it's y equals x squared, it's either up or down. And because a is positive, it's up. Now. What is this going to do? Well, wait a minute. X minus 2 makes X bigger. X plus 2 makes X smaller. So even though you want to say it probably moves it left, it does the opposite. It makes X bigger. Now, if you're confused about that, you can type some of those into decimals.com and play around with it until you have confidence in it. But this moves the vertex right to. So you just move it to the right. And you redraw this like this. It just bumps it to the right. If it was plus 2, if it was plus 2, then that would be left 2. Check it out on Desmos if you don't trust it. That's it, guys. That was a big pre-lesson, I know.